It's the Locked On Flyers podcast for Thursday, November 16th, your daily dose of Flyers news, analysis, and high quality content. It is certainly glad Carter Hart is back. Yeah, yeah, you could say that. He had a really good game versus the Canes. We're going to talk about that one. Plus, we're going to check in with Flyers prospect Massimo Rizzo all on today's show. Your Locked On Flyers, your daily podcast on the Philadelphia Flyers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, and thanks for making Locked On Flyers your first listen every day. I am Rachel Donner. You can find me on the app formerly known as Twitter at rmiriam. I'm here, as always, with Russ Cohen, who's on all your favorite social media apps at Sportsology, and we are at Locked On Flyers over at Instagram, Threads, Blue Sky, and Twitter as well. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. You can subscribe or follow us for free over on YouTube or on the SiriusXM app or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Subscribe to get our latest episode as soon as it's available here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Russ, I uh, would not have predicted before this road trip overall that the Flyers would come away with three wins overall. And I have to say, uh, I am pleasantly surprised, and I'm pretty stoked about it. Yeah, there's no question. I I, I wouldn't have said that either. So there's um there's some good positives in that. There's a few negatives too. Yeah, I think um, this game for me was again. You know, we've been talking about what the Flyers' approach has been, and does it fit into the season plan overall? Um, we've seen over the past several games that the Flyers had kind of shifted a little more toward this net front strategy, trying to shoot more and get net front opportunities. And we were wondering, you know, how that would affect them longer term, just because, you know, it's not a strategy that is unstoppable. You know, teams can figure it out. But at the same time, you know, they had sort of abandoned this quote unquote, playing the right way system, uh, looking at things defensively and looking at carry-ins and all of that sort of stuff that had inflated their underlying numbers, even when they were losing. And now their underlying numbers are pretty bad comparatively to their opponents over these last three games that are wins, which you know, defies logic to some degree, but also the net front thing is still working and it worked in this one, right? Yeah, it did work in this one. And, you know, again, like we said, there are some things that are going on that just aren't sustainable. And and that's where I'm talking about, like, you know, there's some negative there. So, you know, they're going to, they're going to win some games like this, but I don't think it's going to carry them this season. And so that's, you know, it kind of makes me wonder, like, why are they doing it this way? I don't, I don't know why they're doing it this way. Yeah, and I, th- I think it's a really good question because, again, you know, when you're playing the right way, the numbers are going to be there for you, and eventually the score does too. Mm-hmm. And it's almost like they didn't wait for the score to get there in order for them to just continue playing along those paths because they wanted to get some wins and they figured they'd switch it up, which is not a bad idea. I think, it, you know, there's a, a good side to winning these games, right? Where they're not quote unquote playing the right way because, you know, their shot quality wasn't good. They got extremely outchanced, very danger was in the toilet for the flyers in this game came out of it three to one. And why? Cause they blocked 30 shots in this game. And, you know, that is signature John Tortorella and which does work too. And so again, I think it's just um, a, a mixture here where I'm elated for these wins. That was a fun game to watch to a large degree against Carolina there. There's some excitement um, and we'll get into, you know, Carter Hart and his saves as well. Uh, but I, I do think that it's just a question that we need to continue to ask over this season in how are they playing and are they setting the systems up 
so that when their high quality prospects start slotting in in future years, are they going to have the right system for them? Yeah, well, that's the whole thing. I mean, you know, when you start to look at the um, the numbers as far as the time on ice and stuff, that's where you start scratching your head because, again, Travis Sanheim now twenty eight thirty one in this game. Why? Sean yeah, the game won. wasn't even over yet, and I was looking at the time on ice, and it was already up to 22 or 23, and I was like, oh, no. Yeah, Sean Walker, 24. <clears throat> now, you know, some people might say, hey, Russ, we won. Who cares? But, like, what I care about is Zamula only got 11.51. He didn't play a bad game. Why was his ice time diminished? Um, I saw uh, – and this is where – the I mean, yearly- I could answer that partially, but if you'd like, but sure, go ahead. Well, I think it's because Tortorella saw that he was struggling in some previous games. He mentioned struggling with reads, uh, back, but he was back partially because Mete got sent down. Um, so I can understand limiting his minutes if that's what you're thinking about him as the head coach. And I think he took a bad penalty in this game um and there was a bad giveaway he had that led to like a one-on-o kind of shot situation so he is still making mistakes here but i think players are gonna make mistakes no not allowed to anymore like this is it if you make a mistake you know i'm cutting your ice time doesn't matter if we're rebuilt you have to rebuild or not like look i'm not telling you it was the right thing to do i'm giving you the retort i'm just telling you why (laughs) yeah I'm saying, what's the message here? Um, You know, the other part is, so the other day, um, John says that, hey, you know, in regards to Noah Cates, I got to be careful because, you know, I want him playing a certain way, but now we kind of need more offense out of him. Well, how are you going to get offense out of him if you're playing under 10 minutes a game? Where's the offense going to come from? So that's what I'm saying. There's a lot of things like this that you're winning, but you're also going to take away from some of these other players that look even Kate's needs to play minutes. Like he does need to get yeah. better. He does need to do more offensively, but he, you know, he's not putting him in a position to do that. Yeah. And you know, in, in the opposite sense, Ryan Paling, you know, since he got moved up to the third line in lieu of Anoa Cates, um, you know, he's playing with more offensively, offensively minded guys. So he gets a goal in this one and a good mm-hmm. one at that and he was uh tied with Travis Sanheim and uh shots blocked in this yeah. game. So he was, you know, he stepped it up on both ends of the ice here and because he had the opportunity to do so and had the minutes. And I think, you know, to your point, Noah Cates deserves that same opportunity. And again, this is where I kind of question um some of John's methods because I think some of them don't work in today's game. Now, I'm not saying he can't win in today's game because he won today. But putting Tyson Forster out there for 20 minutes, he's he is now trying to will him to score by loading him up with minutes the same as Tippett. And you saw like that last shot that he had when Konechny basically fed him and he had a yeah. chance to beat the goalie. He, he couldn't do it. That's a sure sign he needs to sit because he's thinking about it too much. But instead, John loads him up with minutes. Yeah, I, you know, that's a, another question that we continue to ask is, you know, is there going to be a time where he's going to sit for a game or is he going to get sent down to get his confidence back up? Or would that be a negative for Forster? I think it would be a negative for Forster, in my opinion, to get sent yeah, down. Don't but I don't have a problem him. with sitting him. Yeah. yeah. But he could sit him. I mean, there was no reason that Brink should have sat this game and now they won, is there going to be a reason to play Brink next game? I don't know, but when you get the, you know, the other thing is, when you get a coach that wants to win more than he wants to win and rebuild, then you get the kind of answers out of him, like, well, I don't know when Brink's going to play again. Like, you should never, ever use that as an answer on a rebuilding team, in my estimation. I, I don't think. Well, I think that's a really fascinating point, and I want to know the answer to why you should never say that. But we're going to do that uh, in a little bit, uh, while we also will be talking about the return of Carter Hart and some more about those lineup changes coming up next. 
Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets to all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for all the fun you'll have. My favorite part of the Game Time app is it's great about getting notified about last minute tickets and flash deals. Plus, you can get that all important view from your seats. I'm a huge theater goer and I've used Game Time to get tickets to my favorite Broadway musicals. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event, even an hour after it starts. It's the place to find that last minute seat. Also, those tickets are sent directly to your phone so you never have to dig through your email. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the app, create an account, and use the code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem with the code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel over on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts on the Locked On Sports Network, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to our 24-7 streaming channel. So getting the answer to that question that we asked right before the break, why shouldn't John Tortorella talk about Bobby Brink that way and that he doesn't know when he's getting back in? Okay, so let's just say I'm Bobby Brink and I go to hockey reference. So last year he played 10 games. This year he played 13. He had four points. Last year he he has eight points this year. He took, you know, uh, 31 shots last year. He's taken 45 this year. Last, you know, last year he had one takeaway, four giveaways. This year, this year, four takeaways, four giveaways. Last year he had two blocks. This year he has six blocks. Last year he played 1527. Now he's playing 1539. He's a plus player. What exactly, other than maybe a play or two, is he doing wrong here? What's the message? Is the message play my way? more than scoring because that's what it seems like to me you're going to play this certain way and then i'll allow you to score it's kind of like that and i don't like that message yeah and what tortorella said about it specifically was that the game caught up to bobby brink in terms of speed and i think that there is some truth to that but at the same time brink's playmaking ability allows him to overcome that Right, you have different. to give him a chance to to do that. Like that's the whole thing. You you are now basically limiting him a little bit by saying that, and now you're kind of you know he's having a year that he didn't have last year, and the last thing you want to have a young player do is kind of question, uh oh, all right, now what am you know what am I going to do, and when am I going to get back in there? Because now he doesn't know. He literally doesn't know. Yeah, it's really hard because his numbers were up there with some of the rookie leaders, right? right. And so then to take him out um, seems like it seems weird, right? <laughs> For lack of a no, better it, word. It, it didn't make sense. Nobody thought it really made sense. I couldn't find anywhere where they had a good argument as to why this is happening. Yeah, so I'm hoping he gets back into the lineup as soon as possible. You know, we've got Uh, more games coming up real soon to give him that opportunity. And I certainly hope he does. In the meantime, we did see Carter Hart come back in this game. He's over the injury. He's over the food poisoning. And I think, honestly, this was the perfect kind of game for him to come back to because facing 32 shots on net, it's significant, but not overworking him. And he had to make some really big saves there, but he also got a lot of shots blocked in front of him. Yeah, it was a good game, no question. He, um, there was a few times he was out of position, especially late, and and he kind of got away with it, and and that's fine. Sometimes you have to do that too. But overall, you know, an excellent game for him. So yeah, it was the right kind of game for him to to come back into for sure. And you know, they break this streak of losing to you know to Carolina. You know, that's a positive too. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I thought, you know, aside from a little bit at the end of the game, I thought his puck control was generally good. Yeah. Um, he didn't allow a ton of rebound out there. There was a couple times he kicked the puck out that I was like, oh, I don't know. But um, for the most part, I thought he had pretty solid puck control as well. And he looked pretty sharp. So I was very pleased to see that. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, again, solid game. He gets in there. That that part is good because you want to keep him, you know, playing well and and he missed some time and it didn't look like he was uh, any worse for it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I also want to talk about Owen Tippett because uh, another really solid game for him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's gotten points on the board in all three wins of this road trip here, which is great for him. I thought his goal on the one timer, again, really limited time to think about the shot placement. Oh. So it went in, it was an excellent shot. Um, and I, I really think that uh, he's just he's got his mojo right now, which is really good. Yeah, it's going good. And. He's not thinking about it. And when he's not thinking about it, like he's got the, you know, the ability to score. So yeah, I'm happy to see that. Yeah, I think so too. And uh, I also want to mention Travis Konechny getting on the board in this one. I thought his play with Sh Sean Couturier especially was really good in this game. They had some really cool passing sequences yeah. uh, between the two of them. And I just think the two of them as a partnership are starting to click really well. Um, so it almost like doesn't matter who they're playing with because it's really about the two of them. Right. No, I agree with that. And, that, and you know, and that's fun for Flyers fans to see. It's something that they didn't get to see last year. So, you know, that's nice. Should Sean Couturier play 20 minutes? No, not yet. I well, really unfortunately... Know. If if Konechny is going to play that many minutes, I think Couturier is going to, you know, to, I know, to a large like, degree. There, there, he doesn't, you know, there's a way to do that where he could take some time off in one of the periods so he could have more for the third period. Again, you keep loading 20, 20, 20, and if you don't give him a day off, is it all going to sudden turn into, well, I need two days off now? Well, that is to be determined, I guess. But in the meantime, I did have a lot of fun watching uh, the the two yeah, of them together. Sure I mean, you know. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And, um, you know, again, we talked a little bit about Noah Cates and, and his ice time. Um, just really suffers being on that fourth line with Delorier and Hathaway. I think that it just doesn't give him a lot of opportunities to get those scoring chances that they want from him. Yeah. I mean, this is basically like towards saying to Noah Cates, fix this line. I like these two guys on the line, meaning Hathaway and Delorier, make something out of it. And you can't. It's not a good line. Yeah, I think that's true to some degree. Um, I also think, you know, we've been talking a little bit about uh, Walker and how he's been playing. Another real solid game from him defensively. I thought, you know, he was active in the offense as well, but again, blocked all those shots uh, in the game and uh, just was a real positive contribution. And I think he honestly makes Nick Sealer look better too. Yeah, no question he does. And, you know, th these are minutes he's really never seen and so far so good for him. So, yeah, I mean... You know, you know, in his mind, he's finally getting this chance and then he's taking it. Yeah. Uh, one of the other things we've been talking about a lot with this team, obviously, is special teams. Uh, power play didn't really get a, a ton of opportunities to really uh, see what they have. They just had the one, but um, it, it was not great, I would say. <laughs> I mean, I'm just tired of talking about it. it, it you know, I feel like. If they're not going to improve it, why should I talk about it? Like, it's just, it's like Groundhog Day. Yeah, that is fair enough. Uh, but they did do an excellent job on the penalty kill, I thought. Uh, three mm -hmm. penalty kills out yeah. there. I think the Canes only got two shots on goal over the three uh, penalties or power play opportunities they had. And, and for a team like Carolina, like, that was really good by the Flyers to hold yeah. them to only two shots on the power play. Yeah, that's a big part of the game. No question about it. I, I have to agree with you on that. That's important. 
Yeah. So again, a, a, a solid win from the Flyers. We just are just asking the questions. How does this fit into the overall big picture? But very happy to see them come out with three wins in four games after the way the road trip started. Uh, very, very happy to see how it ended. Uh, we have a prospect profile to do in the next segment. We are going to take a look at a newly acquired Flyers prospect in Massimo Rizzo coming up next. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any $5 winning money line bet. That's 150 bucks if your team wins. If you're thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. Again, I look for the over uh, for the Monday night game with the Eagles and the uh, Chiefs. Uh, the Eagles have actually given up a lot of passing yards, which, again, plays into uh, probably a high score with Patrick Mahomes there. So just something to think about. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and get into the action this NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. So Russ, Massimo Rizzo, uh, if we recall, was traded to, or his rights were traded to the Philadelphia Flyers over the summer in the make good trade with the Carolina Hurricanes, keeping the theme with the Carolina Hurricanes here in I this remember. one. Yeah, so with the Tony D'Angelo trade foul up and uh, this was kind of a gimme to the Flyers for messing that whole thing up. And well, they probably knew that he didn't have any interest in signing with them either, Carolina. So, you know, that usually yeah, helps. There, there is that too. So the Canes actually drafted Rizzo in the seventh round in 2019, uh, 216th overall. Uh, but has since uh, gone on to play at the University of Denver. He's in his third year there right now and has had, you know, a nice start to his season so far. Yeah, I was looking at him on Instat to get deep into his um, numbers. And yeah, well, he's got the uh, 18 points in 10 games, which is always nice. A plus 13. Uh, he's getting 19 minutes on the ice. He is 22 years old, so we have to say he's a little bit older. Um, yeah. 57% of his shots are getting on goal. 50% uh, face-offs won. Puck battles 16. 44% puck battles won. So when when you look at this, you are you know you have to think of the Flyers. Yeah, I'm going to try and you know sign this guy. We're going to try and get this guy signed after this season and see – if he has interest, we don't. You don't want him to get to that senior year, and then all of a sudden he's having a really good year, and he's like, you know, I don't mind you, Flyers, but I'm gonna kind of go check the market out. So try and get him. I, I think if nothing else, he's a good, you know, depth guy. He's friends with Brink. There's nothing wrong with that, and yeah. so you know, he's not gonna hurt your organization. So that's why. You know, you're not getting him because you think he's going to be a great NHLer per se. If that happens, then that's just the cherry on the top. You're getting him because he's a pretty good player and, you know, the Flyers could use more good players in the organization. Yeah, he's the teammates with Jack Devine, who uh, is one of the other people tied for the lead in points in NCAA hockey right now. So for that team to have two like high scoring guys right now is a really good thing. Uh, Macklin Celebrini, of course, would be the other person who's tied for uh, that top spot in points. But uh, yeah, one point... expected. I don't know if anybody expected yeah. Divine. I was super high on him in his draft year. And, you know, he's coming through. He's only 20. So I'm really happy that that he's been able to do that. And actually, and Rizzo is, you know, he's got that's a, yeah. a great player to latch, you know, to, to be able to, to play with. Yeah, so he's uh, Rizzo's in a really good spot right now yeah. at at Denver, uh, one point eight points per game. Uh, interestingly, none of his five goals so far this season were on the power play. So these are all five on five goals, which is yeah, which that's is, a big thing. That's that's you know, I don't I don't want to ever diminish power play goals, but if you you know get a lot of five on five goals, that's an eye opener. 
Right. And yeah, to me, it's it's like, a, let's try and sign him at the end of this season, like you yeah. said, yeah. and and see what happens, because I think that, you know, there's a lot of guys and especially guys that have been in the flyer system who have been sort of college late bloomers to some degree. And, you know, you really think that um, college is such a good development ground for a lot of these guys. And so to see them you know, have the their skills come to fruition in like a junior, senior year. And then coming out of it, you know, the Flyers get a 21, 22, 23 year old that's already matured and have like a Noah Cates, for instance, yeah. you know, that, that may not have like top line ceiling skills, but at the same time, provide a really good solid base for your organization. And so I've, but what do you think like he would have to do for the rest of this season in order to kind of maintain this level of success? I mean, he's getting shots on goal. He, he could, you know, he's probably going to get some power play points at some point right now. He just needs, he, he's probably not going to keep up this, you know, scoring pace, but right. he stays at a point of game. You know, anytime you get a point of game in the college level, it's hard to do. So. That's it. That's enough. That's enough to get the Flyers to notice. Yeah, I think so, too. But I think it's, you know, another potential diamond in the rough here. I think that as far as a make good goes for, you know, having a trade partner welch on you like that, I think it's you know, a pretty good option there and a pretty good prospect to have in your system. Oh, it's a very good prospect to have. I mean, again, right now, you know, from a prospect perspective, perspective this just could be like just a nice little bonus just to get him in there yeah i think so too but uh yeah we will see how he does in the rest of the season we will be following that for sure and uh hopefully he'll be somebody at flyers training camp next year yeah. uh, the next game for Denver hockey is Friday versus Omaha if you want to see him play. So check him out there. That will do it for today's show. We will be back tomorrow. Of course, we will be talking about our rematch with the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, can the Flyers make it four in a row? We will see this weekend. As a reminder, we always want to hear from you. If you've got mailbag questions for us, you can send them in via Twitter at Lockdown Flyers. You can email us at Lockdown Flyers at Gmail or comment over on YouTube. I'm Rachel. I'm on the app formerly known as Twitter at our Miriam. That's our M-I-R-I-A-M. I'm Russ. I'm at Sportsology, S-P-O-R-T-S-O-L-O-G-Y. Have a fantastic day, everyone.